What's going on, everyone? It looks like we are live. If this is your first time here, my name is Brent. This is Speak English with this guy. And in today's English lesson, we are going to talk about irregular verbs. Maybe you saw the title. Maybe you saw the thumbnail. Boris was in the chat wondering, why is Brent wearing an elf hat? Why is there a moose to the side of him? Why is there a die behind him. Well, we are going to talk about all of that and more in today's English lesson about irregular nouns. So nouns are things. They're, they're people, places, and things. Sometimes feelings. That's how English teachers talk about nouns in English. And then if something is irregular, it's not regular. It doesn't follow the rules. So usually when you have one noun, it could end in a number of different letters. But when you have two of those things, it usually ends in an S or maybe an ES. Well, these don't follow the rules. So I don't know if you want to try to memorize this list of irregular nouns I have for you. Or maybe you just want to listen to this English lesson a couple times. That way you will hear the natural flow of how native English speakers will change the plural of that noun. So the first three I have for you, I think are pretty easy, but you can work on your English listening skills. Okay. So let's talk about this first one. And I'm going to have a lot of words on the screen for you. I will read those words and then you can hear how native English speakers use the different nouns when they become plural. Here we go. Man. You might know that word, man. I, I consider myself a man. Just one man on this live stream. If, oh, did you see Bob the Canadian's English lesson on forgetfulness? I thought it was really well done. Well, if we were doing a live stream together, I think Bob, the Canadian, considers himself a man. You would have two men on the live stream. Just, just one man today. But a man is a grown-up person who is a boy and then becomes a male adult. Men is the word we use when we talk about more than one man. Like a group of men playing sports together. And I have an example sentence for you. Hey, those men are playing basketball on the court. See, that's what this lesson is going to be like. We're going to start off easy and then it is going to get a little bit harder. We're even going to talk about some nouns that don't change when they are plural, mostly animals. But before we get too far, but before we get to, yes. Yes, Boris, you got it. We will talk about moose and we will talk about dice. Costa Rica is in the house. Omron, hope you're doing well. United Arab Emirates is in the house. Bom dia, bom dia, Freddy. Yulia, welcome. A lot of familiar faces. John, welcome. John became a gold member this week. Hey, I am going to a concert tonight. My favorite band, Dave Matthews Band. So I will not be going live tomorrow morning, but what I do want to do is do a couple members chats next week. Vacation has started for me and uh, pull a couple gold members on camera with me like we did last week. That was super fun. So be on the lookout. I will put it in the Slack space. I will put it in the Discord server for members sometime this week. Tanya said she wanted to uh, to come on camera, which would be super cool. Tanya, hope you're doing well. Luke is here. Hey, it's been a while. I mean, I've seen you in the comments. I just haven't uh, seen you in the live chat. Welcome, Danny. Hope you're doing well. Mahmood is here. Mortania is in the house. Franklin, what's going on? Filippo, how are you? I hope all is well in England. England, Italy. Why did I say England? Italy, Italia. 
All right. Ciao. Hope you're doing well. Right, Myanmar. Hey, Myanmar. Welcome. Beautiful country. Let's go into uh, another one here. We're starting off easy. We talked about the men. Let's talk about the women. Got one woman. Two women. It's kind of the same ending, right? Woman. Women. Change that first syllable a little bit. A, a woman is a grown-up person who is a girl and then becomes a female adult. Women is the word we use when we talk about more than one woman, like a group of women watching a movie together. Here's an example sentence for you. Those women are walking into the theater together. So maybe there's a group of women, they all want to go see the same movie. Maybe they had dinner first, dinner in a movie. Maybe they had a girl's night out. Sometimes my wife goes on a, out on a girl's night. That's just when a bunch of her friends who are women decide to go out for dinner, maybe a movie, maybe a movie. This is a weird one. The next one, child. Okay, so that's a small human being. One day they may grow up to become a man or a woman, but there is no gender associated with a child. One child. A child is a young person who is not yet an adult. Children is the word we use when we talk about more than one child, like a classroom full of children. Speaking of classroom full of children, I am officially on summer vacation as of today. I had to work yesterday. I don't have to work at school for about two months, maybe a little more than two months. So you might see more live streams over the next couple months, more members chats. Ready? Just talking to Danny, a couple people from France. Oh, wow. Speaking of France, Toulouse, isn't that in France? Coulange? Hope I'm saying your name correctly. Oh, yeah. Italy, Slovenia. Welcome. Benvenuto. Laos is in the house. I like saying that because it rhymes. Welcome, everyone. Hey, Alonzo. Tell you what, I got to. Another shout out, Alonzo, every time I see you in the chat, I think he shares my content the most. Thank you on Facebook. I think he does. Right. Danny's on vacation. Okay, my mood. All right, a little bit of a struggle there between women, men. It happens. He and she, you know, the pronouns when you are learning English, not a big deal. But the better you get, probably the more you will remember. Wilma, hope you're doing well. Jose, hey, Audi the tie. Welcome, my friend. Keep up the good karaoke. Cambodia is in the house. Yeet, welcome. All of these places I wish I could visit very soon. Cambodia, Thai, Laos. Oh, beautiful part, Vietnam, beautiful part of the world. Speaking of Vietnam, that looks like that name might be Vietnamese. Tien, welcome. Back to the English lesson. Now, these are going to get a little bit more difficult, but I do want to talk about one thing you will sometimes hear with child that I think most Americans will not say, oh, look at that child. That child is acting badly, you probably will hear kid. Okay. So that is a regular noun one kid, two kids. And I think you will hear that more often. You might also hear children called kids. The only problem when I was younger, some old people didn't like calling children kids because kids are also baby goats and I know English animals 
might be kind of difficult and they might not be all that important unless you're visiting a farm or you want to become a veterinarian. That is what we call a doctor who helps animals. But just in case you didn't know, that is what I'm talking about when I say goat in English. One of my favorite animals. When I visit a farm, these guys are pretty funny. Most of them. They make a weird noise. I don't even know what you call it. We will talk about sheep a little later on in the lesson. And those animals go, bah. In English, we say, bah. Starts with a B, bah. A lot of little children learn the names of, or the sounds that animals make because they have a lot of important sounds. But I don't know what you would call a goat noise in English. And I know that animal sounds are a little different depending on the language. Like a snake. In English, we say it hisses. Hisses. But when I put a picture of a snake on an older lesson, I found out other languages have different sounds for animals. So I don't know. Goat, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. Oh, that looks like some Vietnamese right there. Could be. Could be. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, tomorrow I am not going to be able to actually teach, I don't think. I will be getting back from my concert really late, probably 1 o'clock in the morning. It's about a two-hour drive for me. So I just thought, let's do it today. Maybe you can watch on replay. Amina is here. Welcome on a Friday. Yes, there are fewer people in the chat. I've got about 50 people. Welcome. Hope you're all doing well. And Amina is here. What's this, Mahmood? Could you please tell the difference between a man, adult, a kid, and a child? And how to use people with age? Well... It's, it's tough because I think most people would consider 18 in the United States as the age when a child becomes an adult at 18. There are a lot of rules that change, like a person can vote when they turn 18, but they can't drink alcohol legally at 18. They have to be 21. So... I don't know if there is one right answer for that. Hey, what's going on? I know that man. A goat bleats. Bleats. Be careful. Doesn't doesn't bleed. It might it might bleed before you eat it. But um I don't want to talk too much about that. But a bleat. All right. Sounds good. Bleat. My mood. The oh my mood. Okay. So in English, speaking of GOAT, it is an acronym. And when I say acronym, that means that each of those letters stand for a word sometimes. And that is what Mahmood is talking about. So if you, I don't want to cause a fight, but if we do say the best soccer player or football player, of all time is Messi, you could call him the GOAT, meaning greatest of all time, the GOAT. Please leave your comments in the chat. Who is the best footballer of all time? Is it Messi? I don't know. I'm not a, uh, I'm an American, so we don't watch soccer as much, but uh, I'll tell you what, Messi, Pretty good. Messi is playing for the United States now. Well, he's playing his like league play in the United States. All right, should we get back to it? What? New York? An 18-year-old can buy alcohol. Is that NY is New York? That's not. No, in the United States, it's, it's 21 all across the country. But maybe NY stands for something else. But in the United States, every single state, it happened about 30 years ago where they more or less were forced to 
change their legal drinking age to 18. Pele, okay, Pele. Hard to argue with that, right? I don't want to cause too much trouble, but I do believe Mbappe is the future. Freddie Wolf, he is French, but I would I would have to agree. I don't know. Back to the lesson, just so I don't get into too much trouble talking about football. The next one, and I did a I did an entire English lesson on this with teeth. If you would like to find it, I should put a link in the description. But I did all of that. What an orthodontist is, what the root of a tooth is. But this is also an irregular noun. So you have one tooth. But hopefully when you talk about all of the things in your mouth, you are using teeth. The more teeth you have, probably the easier it is to chew food. I don't even know. What is it? 32 teeth? Or is it 36? The average adult should have in their mouth. 32? 36? Anyway, I, I'm not a dentist. It's another, that's a, the doctor that works on teeth. Dentist. Check that lesson out, maybe after. Some good stuff there. A tooth is one of the hard things in your mouth that you use for chewing food. Teeth is the word we use when we talk about more than one tooth. Like when you count all the teeth in your mouth. If you only have one tooth in your mouth, I think life would be difficult. You would probably be eating through a straw most of the time. Teeth are helpful. And the problem is you can't replace them. They won't grow back. I talk about baby teeth and adult teeth. So baby teeth will grow back, but probably most people who are watching, you are stuck with those teeth for life. The next one. Not yet. Not yet. Not lips yet. But uh, this week I did an entire lesson on how we use feet and foot in English, feet, foot, check that out. A foot is one of the parts at the end of your leg that help you walk and run. Feet is the word we use when we talk about more than one foot. Like when you put your shoes on your feet, you probably will put both shoes on both feet You'd probably be walking very strangely if you only had one shoe on one foot. So I would think most people would put two feet on, two shoes on both of their feet. Just makes life a little bit easier. Hmm. Zaid, I have a good way of teaching. Thank you so much. Mega, and she is from India. She says 21 in her country too. I wonder if all states in India, 21 across the board, you know, Boris, I can't hear this enough. I wish, I wish my wife was watching right now. Is she, Jamie, are you watching? Look at this, the goat. I've been called the goat for something. So thank you, Boris. That's very kind of you. Freddie Wolf says we have 32 teeth. I'm not going to argue with Freddie Wolf. I'm sure he did his research. And yes, also, yeah, we measure it. I know we have a British citizen here in the chat. So yes, as I mentioned in the English lesson on feet and, and foot, that Americans still use the English system where we measure things in yards and feet. And even the British don't use the English system anymore. Come on, America, get with it. United States, come on. Hey, look, look at that, I love everyone. 
What a nice message. I love everyone. What I wanted to do, yeah, Mahmood, thank you, to grind 16K on YouTube. If you aren't watching on YouTube, you may want to go over there. Yeah, maybe, if you want. Longer lessons on YouTube, usually. Whoa, hey, well, hang on, hang on. We just, we, whoa, I want to go back to this comment. I love everyone. Let's stick with that. But Leo is saying before a fight in Myanmar, maybe they say, I'm going to break your 32 teeth. Easy, easy. Let's, let's just stick with that one for a little while. Okay. I love everyone. That's no need to talk about fighting here. Just, this is a nice lesson. All right. Ah, thank you. So yes, um, I did a lesson 11 months ago on, I think two types of landmarks, man-made landmarks, and then natural landmarks. And I also filmed a lesson at the Grand Canyon. Check that out on YouTube. But we need to go back to this lesson. We just talked about foot or feet. How about this? Yeah, these next two. If this doesn't make you stop learning English, nothing will. Because we are going to talk about two animals. Mouse and a moose. Talk about irregular. So the next one I want to talk about here is, is this one. And it is what a mouse is. You may know this. It's often one of the first animals you learn in English. A mouse. I think in Italian, it's topo, right? And it, so a mouse, you, you might learn that. It's that little animal, not quite as big as a rat in English. But we also have that other thing that we call a mouse. And you might use that with a computer. But if you look at the sentences I have below, a mouse is a small animal with fur. So I've done lessons about that. We usually don't call the hair on an animal in English hair. We usually call it fur. So a mouse is a small animal with fur and a long tail you might see scurrying around. It's a great verb to know. I've done a lesson on that, in fact, scurrying, moving in different directions all at once. And the example I used was maybe you have to go to a lot of places around town. Maybe you have to run errands and you might scurry around town picking up. Maybe you have a party, so you need to pick up food in one place, pick up party hats in another place, pick up ice in another place. So you're scurrying around. So people can scurry, but mice, oh, hang on. I'll talk about more than one mouse in a minute. But mice sometimes scurry around too. Mice is the word we use when we talk about more than one mouse. Like when there are many mice in a field. I didn't want to talk about many mice in your house. Let's just pretend they are in a field somewhere, not in your house. But let me tell you a story about mice one time. I will leave that up in case you want to practice reading it, in case you don't like my story. But one, this was probably 20 years ago, my wife and I moved into a house that her school district owned. It was for the principal. And my wife is not a principal. She is not the the leader of the school. She's just a teacher like I am. But the principal didn't want to move into this house. And he asked my wife, because we had just gotten married, he said, would you like to live in this house? The rent is very cheap. We said, yes. He said, now, there is a problem. Nobody has lived in this house for about a year. We said, that's fine. The rent was really cheap. And across the street, 
there was a big field. And we thought, perfect, fewer neighbors, less noise. But when we moved in, we were unpacking all of our stuff and it started to get late. So instead of putting up our bed, English phrasal verb, we just laid the mattress on the floor and we went to bed. But before we turned the lights off, I thought I saw a flash of something in the corner. It was dark. It was some movement. It was odd. But I thought my mind might be playing tricks on me. So I shut off the lights, got into bed, laid down, and was almost asleep until a mouse scurried up my arm. At least I think it was a mouse because it was dark. And then I turned on the lights and then I couldn't go back to bed for the rest of the night in that house for the first night. Eventually we were in a bed and we got some mouse traps and the thing that made noise. So we didn't have a problem with mice, but the more we unpacked, the more evidence we found that this house had a lot of mice, not just one mouse, lots of mice. So hopefully that story will help you with your English listening comprehension. Hopefully I didn't speak too quickly and maybe you can rewatch that part to understand a little bit more of what I said, but um, it wasn't fun, it was not fun. All right, just checking through the, uh, oh, really? Audie the Ties Cat. Let me put this up. I'll make it big. Boom. How about that? Look at that. Take. I'll take off that banner. Hmm. Let's see. Does your cat want to go at the screen now? Hmm. Maybe I could put a video up of a mouse scurrying across the screen. That would be fun. All right, the next one I would like to talk about, and I do think I have a picture. Yes, is moose. So I live in the U.S. state of Maine. It's known for moose. We have a lot of moose. We just talked about mice. One mouse, two mice. One moose, it just stays the same. Like, it doesn't make any sense, does it? Like, th that's why these are irregular nouns. They don't follow the rules. So that is a moose. Make it a little bigger so you can see. Beautiful animal. We are going to talk about the things on top of their head. Those little spiky things that come to a point. We call those things antlers. Antlers. Maybe a new word for you. So, one mouse, two mice, one moose, two moose. Doesn't change. We're going to talk about a couple that don't change. But a moose is a big animal with antlers that lives in the forest. Moose is the word we use when we talk about one or more of these animals. It stays the same. You have one moose or two moose, and there is a typo in that slide there. Let me, let me make it perfect here. There was actually a run-on sentence there. This is going to be absolutely perfect now. Look at that. I, think, I think it's perfect now. At the end right there, I didn't have a period, and I should have. It stays the same. You have one moose, or two moose, or three moose, or a hundred moose, stays the same. Kind of weird. That's what English is all about, being weird. Let's check the chat just to make sure I'm not missing anything. All right. I probably am missing some things, but oh yeah, yeah, there we go. Mahmood, deer and deer. One deer, 50 deer. Doesn't change, and they do have the same pronunciation. What's the difference between moose and elk? 
That's a tough one. Um, because elk, if you describe those two animals, they probably would sound the same. They, they both have antlers, at least if they are male. But elk tend to be smaller. So we're going to, yeah, elk, deer, moose, they're all very similar animals, but yeah, slightly different. Maybe Google a couple pictures. <clears throat> we are going to talk about oxen and ox a little later. It's another one of those terms where it's just like, sometimes it can be more than one thing, but I can probably put up a picture of an elk here. And that is another one of those verbs where elk, I don't know, is the plural elkin? I don't think it is. I think it's elk, the plural of elk. Oh, which is bigger, moose or an elk? Oh, I'm not even sharing this. Hang on, let me share this. I can share this. This is, um, we can explore this together. How about that? So, yeah. What's the difference between moose and elk? Well, we can ask Google, right? Look at this. Moose are the largest animal in Colorado and grow significantly larger than elk. So, do we have a picture of an elk? Look at that. I mean, look at that. Look very similar. Very similar to a moose. Ooh, listen to elk terrifying. I guess they make quite a sound. What is the plural of elk? Elk. We could just put in plural, right? I mean, these are things that you will probably never need elks. Okay. Do you say elk or elks? So as an English teacher, I have spoken English for 47 years and I've never really needed to know the plural of elk. So you probably will find the same thing. It's like, I don't really even need to know that, but sometimes it's fun to explore. Check in the chat. Just want to make, okay, hey, anytime someone says something nice about me, I got to put that on the screen, right? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, so Audie is also a teacher. I know a teacher, at least to his, his grandchildren. There's the plural. He has more than one grandchild. So yeah, it's baby animals. I did an English lesson on baby animals when I first started the channel about three years ago. It didn't do too well, but if anybody wants me to update that lesson, we probably could do that. I don't know. Moose are called, are also called originals. I've never heard that in English, Freddie. So at least not where I come from. All right. Yeah, Mahmood. I do have a moose story. So my son had a hockey tournament in Canada, but my daughter was singing in a concert really late. So I needed to drive from my state to Canada, which was about five hours away, a five hour drive. And I had to go through Northern Maine, which is known for having moose. And after dark, it got really scary because on the road, every few miles, we came upon a moose just standing in the road. And each year in my state, there are probably a few people who are killed in their cars because they hit a moose. So I needed to go really slowly. Even my headlights weren't helping me find the moose because they were dark. And it was only when I saw their eyes or I was really close to these moose that I knew they were in the road. So as my British friend would say, it was a bit dodgy. It was a bit dodgy. I, I did not like that. So I, I wanted to leave much earlier, but my daughter's concert ended pretty late. All right. Somalia. Welcome, Sharif. What is a moose? Well, that's a picture. 
that's a picture of a moose right there. Now, the next one I would like to talk about as we get rid of the picture of a moose, I don't, I don't have a picture of a leaf. I figured most people knew what leaves were, but just in case, I have a couple sentences for you. A leaf is a flat, thin part of a plant that grows on a branch. Leaves is the word we use when we talk about more than one leaf. Like when you see many leaves on a tree. Many leaves on a tree. And I think I have an example sentence for you. Wow, those leaves are turning color. So where I live in the fall, the leaves will go from green to red and orange and yellow. It's beautiful. Sometimes you will hear the word foliage when you talk about a lot of leaves. Oh, the foliage is beautiful here in the fall. Hope that helps. This next one we use quite a bit because when you eat dinner, you probably have a fork, you probably have a spoon, and you probably have a knife. Knife, one object. But when you have more than one knife, it changes to knives. Knives. A knife is a tool with a sharp blade that you use for cutting things. Maybe you cut up your carrots with a knife. It's a phrasal verb there for you, cut up. You can cut up some food. Knives is the word we use when we talk about more than one knife. Like when you see a set of knives in the kitchen. A set of knives. You might hear that. A set of knives. I don't have any English lessons on the different knives we have in English, but you have steak knife, a paring knife, a butcher knife. If anybody would like me to do an English lesson on knives, I can do that. I just don't know how useful an English lesson on knives would be to everyone. Hey, I am going to take a drink of water and I should probably play this thing to help you uh, remember to do maybe some things if you are enjoying this lesson. If this lesson is helping your English improve, don't forget to tap that like button and share it with a friend who's learning English. Yeah, so Alonzo, I don't know if he is still in the chat, but he always shares my stuff. Thank you so much to anyone who has shared, liked, subscribed, become a channel member, all that stuff really helps the channel. So thank you. Boris, I saw a moose. What? Hang on, Boris. I saw a moose. It ran right out of the woods at me. They are very dangerous when they run across the road. Absolutely. Massive beasts. They are the biggest animal in my state Wow. And they usually aren't that aggressive because they are so big. They aren't usually aggressive. So I wonder, Boris, is it because there were babies nearby? I believe baby moose are sometimes called calves. Or you can just say baby moose. There might be some baby moose around. Wow. Yeah, leave is a little different from leaf. Leave. Hey. I need to leave in a few minutes. Oh, that's a pretty leaf on the tree. So just a little, little different pronunciation there. I need to leave. Oh, look at that leaf. Leave, leaf. Hope that helps. Oh, hey, greetings from Poland. So if you are a channel member, maybe you saw this already, but I did make a video where I used AI to help me speak Polish. Where is it? Maybe I can't find it now, but I did it for um, French and Portuguese. Is this? Oh, yeah. That's me. 
That's me speaking Portuguese. Uh, sorry. That's me speaking Polish with the help of a computer. This is Portuguese. Significa estragar ou arruinar os planos ou felicidade de alguém. I mean, perfect Portuguese, right? You can do anything these days with a computer. Jeez. All right, there you go. Did it sound good? Did it sound good in Polish? A computer program in English, we say AI, artificial intelligence. It it did it for me. Now it's not. It's um called. It's a. It's called captions. It's a um, an app called captions. But I did it in French as well. I know, but I think Freddie. I think um Freddie's already seen it. But maybe I can get a little French going here. Maybe if it takes too long. Is it, is it me in English? Warren. That's me in English. Is, Alors celui-là, plus de pluie, plus de pluie. So Arroser le défilé de quelqu'un. Ça veut dire que tu gâches ou ruines les plans ou le bonheur de quelqu'un. Perfect French. I've been studying it for oh, a couple minutes. Oh yeah, the Polish language is super difficult. Absolutely. And then, uh, can't probably see it, but I have the. Uh, I think it would be a good way to study English, maybe. Maybe I'll reach out and see if they will sponsor me and then we'll talk a little bit more about them. How about that? Yeah, it's, Freddie says it's quite impressive what AI can provide. Yes, you're French. That's, I think Freddie left a comment about that on the members uh, video. Yeah, my French is now better than Freddie's. Native French speaker. Yeah, Freddie says impressive about what AI can do. I might use the term scary. It's a little scary to see what can be done so quickly. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Omron, that's a good, that's a good comparison. That's a good analogy. I think the moose is the size of a horse. Yeah. Um, some moose are even larger though. So that's the scary thing. But I would say, yeah, about the same size. The adult moose, though, can get a little bit bigger than the average horse. I've heard that. I've heard Polish, Ukrainian, Belarusian. They're all very, very similar. Like if you were a native Polish speaker and you heard a Ukrainian speaking, you would know most of what was being said. I have three Ukrainian students at my school they moved from Ukraine. They're 13 and 14 years old. So I don't know any Ukrainian, but I was just speaking very simple Russian to them, like Miazvut Brent, Privyet Drug, you know, those kind of things. And they they laughed at me. But they but they understood, I think, mostly. All right, a couple more here of these irregular nouns. What about this one? Life, lives, life, lives. A life or life is the time when a person or an animal is alive. Lives are the word, is the word we use when we talk about more than one life. Like when we talk about video games. If you are about my age, you might have played Pac-Man when you were younger, maybe you still play Pac-Man, but when you play Pac-Man, you get three lives and maybe you can earn an extra life uh, if you play really well. So I am not a big gamer. Please let me know in the chat if you are a gamer. That's what we say in English if somebody plays video games a lot. I am just too busy teaching English to play a lot of video games, but no, there will be no live English lesson tomorrow. I said um, earlier in the chat, I am going to a concert tonight. It will get over really late. I will probably get home at one or two o'clock in the morning. 
I hope I don't fall asleep at the wheel. I am an early bird. I am usually in bed by nine o'clock. So this is going to be a challenge for me tonight not to fall asleep. Tanya is here. Welcome from Germany. Welcome. Okay. No, Polish, Ukrainian, and Belarusian sound similar, but we can't understand each other. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Thank you for that clarification. All right. Cecilia's here. Hey, Argentina is in the house. A couple more here. A couple more here. We just talked about lives, didn't we? Aha. Boris was wondering before, hey, in, in the thumbnail, why are you wearing a, an elf hat? This is why. An elf is a small magical creature that you might see in fairy tales or movies. Elves is the word we use when we talk about more than one elf. Like, imagine a group of elves working together. In the United States, a lot of people celebrate Christmas and to help Santa get all of those toys ready for Christmas night, he has some helpers. And in English, we call those helpers elves. There's also something that happens in, in some families that uh, a magical elf will visit a few days before Christmas. And we call this elf on the shelf. There he is. That is an elf sitting on a shelf. There are no books on that bookshelf. There's an elf. So shelf is not an irregular verb. It does follow a different rule. And it's one of those words that end in F, but when you make it plural, you add a V. So shelf becomes shelves. There's a V and an E and an S. So um, it's not exactly irregular, but you don't simply add an S. So the elf on the shelf. A few days before Christmas, this little person will arrive, or this little elf will arrive, and it just kind of watches the children to make sure they are behaving so Santa can deliver those toys. The elf on the shelf. How about this one? One of my favorites. One of my favorites, cactus. Cactus. So last year, I went to Arizona and I did a lot of English lessons. One in the desert, actually. And there were many cacti in the desert. So one cactus, many cacti. A cactus is a plant that usually lives in dry areas and has sharp needles instead of leaves. Cacti is the word we use when we talk about more than one cactus. Mostly. Now, if you want to, many, many native English speakers, instead of saying cacti, they will say cactuses. And that is acceptable. If you want to speak like perfect, proper English, cactus is acceptable and also cacti. Cactuses, cacti, same thing. Wow, there are a lot of cactuses in the desert. Hope that helps. Uh, the next one too, very similar. Octopus, right there. It's an animal that lives in the ocean and it has eight legs, arms. In English, you might hear the word tentacle. So an octopus has eight tentacles, but also if there is more than one octopus nearby, you might hear them called octopi or octopuses. So octopi, octopuses. Not sure how often you will have to say those words in English, but in case you ever have to say those words, there's a little help for you. Yeah, octopus. What a, what a crazy creature. I've done some reading on octopi. They're fascinating. Yeah, many of them have their own personalities. Some of them can change color. So pretty cool. 
Let's check the chat to see if I'm missing anything important. It looks like a lot of people are talking. Oh, Amina had to go. Amina, I hope you have a great rest of the day. Cactus. It was so cool. When I went to the desert for the first time, I'm like, there are really cactuses here. So cool. And I didn't even, oh man. Hey, Mahmood. Brother bother. Hey, come on, man. Mahmood's brother. Just chill. Chill. The man is trying to improve his English. Stop bothering him. Come on. All right. What? Amina is outraged. No, Amina doesn't get outraged. If Amina has a comment, she knows she knows where she can get with me. I don't think that's not true, is it? Just checking back through the chat. She can she's been a channel member forever. She can just leave the question in the Discord. Yeah, I don't I don't know what you're talking about. What's going on, Mr. Ali? MD, that stands for Mohammed, right? MD, Mohammed? What? The plural of tomato? No, nope, I don't think so. Tomato, tomatoes, volcano, volcanoes? I don't think there's a difference. No. And some of these, we're actually going to talk about one in just a minute where maybe the proper term for the plural changes, but native English speakers they don't do that. They don't follow that rule. Um, yeah, I wanted to keep it kind of simple. So Viet, I wanted to keep it as simple as possible, but there are other irregular nouns, but some of them just aren't used that much, like criteria. So I didn't want to go too much into that. Oh, have I ever... Have I ever, let's see, tasted, right? Have I ever tasted octopus? And no, I haven't. But I think if I ever go to Italy, and I plan on going to Italy, I will have to try octopus. From Angola. Paolo. Bom dia. Bom dia. I have a few students at my school who have come from Angola and they help me practice my Portuguese. There's qu we have quite a few students that go to my public school that I teach at from Angola and they do speak Portuguese. So, bom dia, hola. All right, my mood's back. Okay, that's right. That's what I'm talking about, my mood. He shut his mouth up. Good. Brother of my mood, leave my mood alone. All right. Let's do it. Back to the lesson. Wrapping up here. Not too many left. The next one. Ox. One ox. Two oxen. For some reason. One ox. Two oxen. An ox is a big animal like a cow that people used to help with work on farms. Oxen is the word we use when we talk about more than one ox. Like when people see a pair of oxen pulling a cart. So if you look at that picture, if you are listening to the podcast, you can't see that. And even if you are watching, I just made the picture disappear by accident. But that thing that is holding those two oxen together is called a yoke. That thing that holds, man, there's another, there's another typo right there. Let's fix that real quick. There we go. That thing that holds those two oxen together is called a yoke. But did you know this? This might be helpful. If you ever go to a restaurant and you don't like the yellow part, of an egg. In English, you have the egg whites, but that yellow part has a name and it's yolk. It's the same, it's spelled differently, but it's pronounced the exact same way 
as the thing that is holding those two oxen together. Both are yokes, just spelled differently. So if you ever go into a restaurant and you don't like the yellow part of the egg, you can say, I'll take scrambled eggs, but hold the yolks. That means don't put any yellow part in the egg. Hold the yolks. It might cost you a little bit of extra money, but some people don't like yolk. I don't mind yolk. I don't know. Let me know in the chat. Do you like the yellow part of the egg? Do you like the yolks? I do. I probably like the white part better, but I don't mind yolks in my eggs. Some people don't like it. So let's uh, wrap this, this part of the lesson up here as a review. The yolk is the yellow part inside an egg that we eat. A yolk is a wooden tool that goes on the neck of animals to help them pull heavy things. Yolk, those oxen are being held together by a yolk. Hope that helps. Another one right here. I did not put a picture up of this. There is one on the thumbnail. But I think when I describe it, you'll know exactly what these things are. Dice. And this is one you don't hear the singular form of this noun very often. But it is die. A dice is a small object with different numbers on each side that you roll to play games. Very popular game of Monopoly. You usually throw two dice to play that game. But when you just have one of them, you say die instead of dice. And this is the one I was talking about earlier where native English speakers usually just say dice, even if it's one. So, hey, can you pass me that dice? Just And it's just one. So if you want to be like perfect, and let's face it, is anybody's English perfect? No. You could say die. Hey, I need that die. Can you pass me that die? Or you could just say dice for even, even if it's just one, even if it's just one. Yeah, we call that the egg whites, the egg whites. All right. Yeah, Mega. Agree. That's good. It's good. I like the I like the egg whites. I like the egg yolks. I think they're better together. If I had to choose, I would just pick egg whites, but I think they I think they complement each other nicely. If they go together and they work together, you can say they complement each other. There you go, Audie. My wife, she likes to eat it, but I can eat at all. I think you're missing something there, Audie. I know your wife and, and you have different opinions about egg yolks, but I'm not sure exactly what it is. All right, into the yolk. Hovescri. I say that correctly? Oh, Omron, did I miss this? I missed this. I'm sorry. I don't know when this happened, but Omron dropped a super chat. Thank you so much. Got a little something for you. Let me find it. They are. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. Yeah, Omron does this, um, I think, almost every lesson. So thank you so much, Omron. Let's check the chat here. Anything else? Anything else? All right, John prefers the yolk as well. Um, Freddie, how do you spell the, uh, let me bring that up again. It's, it's exactly like when someone is no longer living, die. It's right down there at the bottom in the quotes, die. All right, what else is going on here? Oh, Filippo, the goat. Thank you so much. Got a little something here for you. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. Man, I appreciate that. 
Filippo, thank you so much. Every little bit helps. I do appreciate it. And both Omron and Filippo are channel members as well. So thank you so much. All right, I think we got a couple more here, don't we? All right. I think we do. Just checking the chat here. Interesting things going on in the chat. But I do believe this is something we should talk about. Not yoke. Sheep. Sheep. I don't even, do I have a picture of a sheep? I might. Nope. No picture of a sheep, but a sheep. It's a fluffy animal with wool that you might see on a farm. When you talk about more than one sheep, you still say sheep. So if you see two sheep in a field, you can say, hey, look, there are two sheep roaming in the fields or three sheep or four sheep or five or a hundred or a thousand. And I think that's it. Tiara, hello. Hope you're doing well. But um, I think we've come to the end of the English lesson. That's it. Now, like I said, yeah, exactly, Danny. One fish, two fish. That doesn't change. You might hear, especially little kids, you know, they just will say fishes. And if you say fishes, it doesn't change the meaning. So it's all good. Filippo, again, thank you so much for that super chat. Omron, thank you so much. And that'll do it. I'm going to a concert tonight, so no live stream tomorrow. Be on the lookout. Maybe one on Sunday. Maybe one in the middle of next week because I am on summer vacation. And if you are a channel member, check the Discord, check the members chats because I think there will be a couple members chats this week. Okay, maybe maybe on like Sunday or Tuesday. So be on the lookout. Mahmood, thank you so much. Thank you to everyone who has stopped by and got a little English lesson on this Friday. Yulia, I think Yulia has been here the entire time, right? Thank you, Cecilia, Freddie, Tiara. Thank you. Oh, this is the first time. Welcome, Tiara. Hey, don't, don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a lesson. I have over 700 lessons on YouTube. More lessons on YouTube than I do have on Facebook. So maybe if you're watching on Facebook, come over and check out those other lessons. Thank you, Danny. Lee, we'll see you later. Alexandria, my new Polish friend, thank you so much. I appreciate it, Mahmoud, the goat. All right. Thank you so much. These lessons are always very fun for me. I hope they are fun for you. And I think we'll see each other again very soon. Adios.